what did he say? Uh, he told me at that point if I wouldn't do what he said, he would kill me. Tracy Edwards was the final victim of serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. The attack took place in 1991 when he was 31 years old. Edwards met Dahmer at a bar. Dahmer invited Edwards to his apartment to watch a movie and drink some beer, but soon he handcuffed Edwards and threatened him with a knife. Edwards escaped from Dahmer's apartment on July 22nd, 1991, and the police found him wandering the streets with handcuffs on his wrist. Edwards led the police back to Dahmer's apartment. Police officers searched Dahmer's apartment where they found Dahmer's Polaroid photos of other victims. They also found a head in the fridge, three in the freezer, preserved schools, jars with body parts, and even more pictures. This is Tracy Edwards' testimony. All photographs seen in this video are 100% real. What your last name for us? Tracy Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S. And how old are you, sir? 32. And you were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on July the 22nd, 1991? Yes. And at or about that time, on that late afternoon, did you have occasion to see a person that you knew at that time or subsequently learned was a fellow by the name of Jeffrey Dahmer? Yes. Sir, would you indicate where Mr. Dahmer is seated in the courtroom? It's over there. Right in the middle between my two associates? Yeah. Is that right? That's right. So that you know, Mr. Edwards, your name is known to the jury because there has been testimony concerning what happened to you and at the apartment of Mr. Dahmer. Do you understand? Sure. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Did you know Mr. Dahmer by name prior to that date? I've seen him a couple of times before then. I didn't know his name personally. All right. Did you ever talk to him before that date? Uh, speaking to him, saying hello as he passed by. Yeah. Just casual, friendly? Casual. Yeah, friendly. Hellos. Hellos, yeah. Right. Were you with somebody or were you alone? A couple other friends, yeah. Okay, so the record is absolutely clear. You are not a homosexual, are you? No, not at all. Okay. So you were with a couple of your buddies, were yeah, you? That's correct. And what were you doing? Uh, we was drinking beer, just talking, hanging out, you know. About 6 o'clock at night, was it? Yeah, about 6, 6.15, whatever. Did you have occasion then to see Mr. Dahmer? Yeah, he approached us eventually and started talking to us. Yeah. Were you three black males? Yeah, uh, one. One white, two black males. Okay. So you're a friend? Yeah, my best friend was white, yeah. When he came up and started talking to you, what is it that Mr. Dahmer said to you? Uh, he said he was just in the city from Chicago. He was taking care of her sick grandmother, I believe, in West Allis. He said he was a professional photographer. He usually pays people for pictures and stuff like that if we, anybody was interested in making money at that time. Yeah. Did he describe yeah. the kind of pictures that you were going to be posing for if you chose to take him up on the offer? Uh, he said nude. Nude. Right. After he said that to you, what did you and your friends do? They were just talking, discussing it, you know, seeing what was going on, yeah. And what did you end up doing? Did you remain at Grand Avenue or did you go somewhere else? Uh, we proceeded from there. He said he was going to buy all those guys beer, rum and coke, you know, watch videos or something like that. Rum and coke, did you yeah, say? Yeah, we, we went to the liquor store on Wisconsin Avenue, 7th and Wisconsin Avenue. So you walked from Grand Avenue down to 7th and Wisconsin? Yeah, up, so to speak. Yeah. At that Between 5th and 6th, 7th, something like that, okay. I'm not really sure. The general area of 6th right. or 7th in Wisconsin. Right. Was it going to be the three of you and Mr. Dahmer were going to stay together, or was it agreed upon that one or others of you were going to go with Mr. Dahmer, or was no, there no agreement? Uh, they were going to meet up with us eventually later on that evening. Yeah. Meet up with who? Uh, Jeffrey at his apartment, but he uh, gave them the wrong address at that time. Did anyone go into a liquor store and buy anything? Uh, Mr. Dahmer brought liquor. Yeah. So he went into beer. a liquor store? Right. Tell us what happened then. Okay, he was talking to them. Then we were going to uh, go up the street. I was going to go home and change and everything at this time. So we proceeded. He, we caught a cab at the bus station, you know. What were you going to do? You said you were going to go home and change clothes? Yeah, and eventually I was going to go over there, you know, and maybe check out what he was talking about, about making the money at that time. 
So yeah. your interest was in making some money. Right. Did he tell you how much you would be paid if you did pose for him? He said $100. for. You had no idea, did you, that this was for any homosexual kind? No, he didn't come across like that, and he didn't even act like it at that time. Okay. And then we go, we, me and Dimer, my friends say they're going to go and change and call up the girls, and we'll meet up later on, you know. Did, yeah. Was there an address given as to where you were going? He gave them some address that wasn't correct. You, know. you later found that out? Right, from my friends. But it was me and Mr. Dimer in the cab, you know, leaving. You met up at about quarter of 6, 6 o'clock, 6.15. What time is it now, at this time? It's maybe uh, 6.30 as we get to 25th and West, 26th in Wisconsin. So you stop yeah. at 26th in Wisconsin, and yeah. what happens there? Okay, we get out the cab then, and then he suggested he go to the store and get cigarettes before he went to his apartment. After he did that, did you go to his apartment? Yeah. What route? Uh, through the alleys, through the back way. We was, there the any, back and, was there any discussion as to why you were taking that route? Said it was safer, people wouldn't bother us or whatever. Tell me about his demeanor, you know what I mean by that, Mr. Edwards? Yes, How was he acting? Just like a normal, everyday person, you know, friendly, good conversationalist. He was talking about the military, things of that nature. Yeah. Had you been in the military? Uh, my father retired in the Air Force, so I've been to several different bases. I was born on an Air Force Army base in Fort Carson. And that's the kind of thing you were yeah. talking to it's him It's like about. a family thing, you know, so I know a lot about it. The time that you were, like, going to his apartment, was he intoxicated? No. Had neither. he been drinking? Yeah, I've been drinking a couple how, of beers. How about you? Were you intoxicated? No, not at all. Had mm -hmm. you had something to drink? Uh, I sipped maybe a little beer of my friend's beer. That was it. Tell us what happens when you get up to the apartment. Tell us what you observed, what your senses told you. Okay, first of all, it seemed like a normal apartment. When we got inside, he turned off burger alarms, asked him why. First, it was a foul odor, okay? Tell and us about that. What kind of an odor? It was, was just it? like an odor. I didn't quite know what it was. You know, he told me a sewer pipe had broke and management would take care of it. Yeah. And did you accept that? Yes, because I worked around at construction companies before, and when pipes bust, sewer pipes bust, they smell. You know? okay. So I brought that. He turned off something. What did he turn off? Alarms. Did you ask him about that? Yeah, and he said the part of the neighborhood he was in, he was protecting his property, things like that, cameras, VCRs, TVs, things of that nature. Did you accept that? Yes, I did. Tell the jury what the apartment was like. It was like... Normal, pretty decent apartment, had nice things in it, you know, had certain boxes sitting on the front, Marotta Axe boxes. I asked him about it, he said he cleaned bricks with those, you know, which you can use that type of axe to clean bricks, so I brought that also. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you just said. He, you asked him about some boxes? Yeah, that were laying in the front living room floor. And what did he tell you about those? That he cleaned brick with the Marotta Axe. Okay. Okay. What, what was the living room? What did you see in there? The boxes you told us about? The boxes, is a couch. There's a fish tank there also. A black lamp. Yeah, there was a little table-like on the left side. Could you see a refrigerator? Yeah, I could see the refrigerator on my left. Was it, was it close to the living room? Yeah, maybe eight feet from the living room. So it was just off the living room? Right. Now, did you stay in that room or did you go to another room right away? Uh, we stayed in that room for a while. Now, you're fully clothed. Yes. Okay, and you're sitting on a couch. Right. And he offers, he talks to you about uh, these, this posing, and you weren't sure you are going to do it. Right. How much had you been offered to do the posing? A hundred dollars. Okay, and when he get, brings you the beer, he brings you rum and coke? Yeah, he brings that, yeah, he brings the, the beer first, and then he brings the rum and coke. How big of a glass? Maybe that big. Yeah. About four inches about high? four inches, yeah, three and a half, something like that. Did you ever taste it? Yeah, I took a few sips. Was it strong, weak, medium, or just about right? Uh, I'm not a big liquor drinker, so it didn't taste that good to me. I don't. Didn't taste good to you. You don't know if it was strong or not. It's strong or not, no. Because okay. I'm. Okay. What did Mr. Dahmer do? Did he likewise have a drink? No, uh, I think yeah, right, a beer, but I don't think he drank all of his drink at that time. Was he? Had, did he have any rum with him? Mm. I just noticed a beer, and I was just, I don't know, getting a little agitated maybe, you know, because of the smell and things, and then we, he threw my conversation off talking about the fish in the fish tank, you know. Okay, when you start talking about the fish in the fish tank, do you bring that up or does he? Uh, he does. And what do you do when he does that? I turn my, turn to the right like the fish tank is here, I'm turning all the way over here. 
You yeah. turn to your right to look at it? To look at the fish tank, right. And when that happens, what happens to you? Uh, all of a sudden, a handcuff and a knife is pulled on me. Now, at that moment, what do you do? Uh, first, I feel fear. Then I ask him what's going on. You know, this is not necessary, you know, to pull a knife on me. At that Are you point. afraid? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have any reason to know why he did that? None whatsoever. Did you have any idea at that time it was going to happen? No. Tell me about his demeanor at that time when you looked and realized he had a knife and you and a cuff. What was, you were only cuffed on one wrist. One wrist, yeah. What was happening to the other part of the handcuff? Okay, he had it in his hand. He was holding it? Holding that in the wrist, yeah. Where was the knife? In the other hand? Uh, the knife was like, yeah, here. The knife was in this hand. He had it on me like this. But the record reflect he was holding his, the knife would, in his right hand as he showed it, holding the cuff in his left hand. Is that right? right. And your left hand is cuffed. Yeah. Right. Where do you have the knife? What kind of a knife was it? It was like a military knife, knife a machete of some type. Yeah, you know, yeah, lower right up under my rib cage, you know. Like so you had back, it, somewhere in the back here. You had it pointed at your rib cage. Yeah. Did you feel it? Touch yeah, it? he he had it on me. He had it against my body. What happened? What was going through your mind the moment that happened when you realized you had a knife at your side and a handcuff on your hand? What did you think? I think like you know what's going on. You know this guy is so nice and all of a sudden you know it's like he's pulling knives and handcuffs and all on me. You know. What'd you do? What'd you say to him? I asked him what the problem was, you know, that it's not necessary to do this, you know. What'd he say? Uh, he told me at that point if I wouldn't do what he said, he would kill me. What happened? Tell us what happened step yeah. by step as best and, you can remember. And then all of a sudden he kind of calms down, you know, and then he said he has the key in the bedroom, so we proceed to the bedroom. The key to the handcuffs? Right. Yeah. So you believed he was going to take him off? Yeah. At that point I had to go along with this guy, you know, and then if I had to find out, so I walked back there with him, he kind of guides me back there, you know. Guides you back with the cuff and the knife? Yeah, right. And you go into the bedroom? Right. What do you see in the bedroom? Uh, a big about 50 60 gallon drum barrel whatever do you ever see a 50 60 drum barrel in anybody's bedroom no, before not at all do you have any idea you ask him what it was no at that point i asked no questions at that time yeah. was there a bed in that room yes how was the bed was it made unmade what did it, what was, un, it was unmade what, what did you see on the bed if anything something like a stain or whatever yeah, on the bed what did you think it was at that point in time, I wasn't sure. What did you do when you got in the bedroom as he's holding on to the cuff and the knife? What did you do? I'm um, studying this talking, trying to be friends with him. You know? Did you remain standing? Did you sit down? Uh, he made me sit down at that point. We both sit on the bed. Right? Was it at the foot of the bed, side of the bed, head of uh, the bed? Maybe halfway between. Did that room have a TV set in it? Yes. Was there anything going on on the TV? Yeah, the Exorcist movies was playing at that time. There was an Exorcist movie on. Yeah. You know which one of them? Uh, the name, I'm not sure. I think it's three. I'm not sure which one. When we first got into the apartment, he went through the back, to the back bedroom. Maybe he put it on then. I'm not sure. Okay. And then what happened? You're both sitting on the bed? Yes. Are you still in handcuffs? Yes. Is he holding the handcuff? Right. Do you still have the knife? Right. Is it pointed at your side, as you've told us before? Right. You trying to be cool? Very much so. You're not a, you're not fighting with them. No. Not What's at your all. intention? What are you planning on doing? Getting away. I was contemplating on at the point jumping out the window. You know, I was basically talking with this person, trying to let him know I was his friend. Yeah. Okay. He acted. At times he would go through like different changes with me. You know. One Tell minute, us about that. One minute he's like nice. Then he was telling he didn't want people to leave him or abandon him. Things of this nature. You know. Yeah. Well, what did you think about him as a person? What impression was made on your mind of this fellow that you're dealing with here? Yeah, that at times he wasn't himself, and then at times he was, was like a nice guy, you know? He would come and go different times, you know, throughout the whole time. Then he would like sit, being quiet at times, watching a movie, wanting me to watch the movie, you know, and just doing little tanning sounds, you know? Did you observe him watching the movie and how he would react to the movie? Right, he would like this start rocking back and forth when he, you know, certain parts of the movie or whatever. And you have to say, what did he say, man? It was like chanting at certain times and rocking back and forth, right? Tell us about his chanting. What was that all about? Uh, I'm not even sure, sir, but it was just like, I can't tell you the words. I couldn't understand what he was saying at that time. Can you mimic him? How it sounded? 
was like a slow slur, like mmm, some of that nature, some close like that, I'm not sure. Did it keep on for a period of time? Off and on throughout the ordeal. And how about the, the movement back and forth? How how was that being effectuated? Uh, just like back and forth, he would do it every now and then. You know? Just as you are rocking in right, your chair. Like this. And chanting. And chanting. Was there any parts of the movie that was going on that you saw that he said anything about? It was like the part about the preacher that used to be a preacher that had got possessed and that uh, and that uh, it would seem like he was like interested in that part. That part had his attention more than anything. Yeah. But tell us about what you mean by that. What impressions were made upon your mind when this was going on as to had his attention? How would he? How did he appear to you? It appear like like it was like he wanted to mimic it or be like that part, you know, being demonized or whatever in that nature. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed you. Yeah, like he wanted that that type of movie, that part, certain parts of that part interested him, you know. It was like he changed with it at times. Then he would get more aggressive, try to get me to handcuff myself, both hands, and he's told me it made him feel more dominant. Okay, did you and he move off of the bed at any time? Yes, he wanted me to lay flat down, stomach down on the floor at that time. Did you at any time go to the bathroom, use the washroom, prior to the time that he asked you to lay down on the floor? No. All right, tell us what happened when, how did that happen that he told you to lay down on the floor? No, he told me to lay down face down, put both of my hands behind my back because he got, he changed again at that point like he got more aggressive at that time. Okay, now, but tell us, tell us, uh, did he still have the knife out? Yes, he still had the knife out. And what did you do? Okay, I kind of like laid on my sides for some reason. I guess God told me not to lay flat down or let this person handcuff me, so I didn't. So you were trying to stop that from happening, but you right. got down on the floor. Right. What did he do? He kind of laid across me, put his head across my chest at that point. And what was he doing with his head? Pardon me? What did it appear to you he was doing with his head? What was he trying to do? Like he was listening to my heart, because at the point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. He said he was going to eat your heart? Yes, that's correct. Did he still have the knife? Yeah. Where was the knife pointed? When I was on the floor, he had it pointed at my groin area at that time. One knife? He had several, and then he slipped when I managed to slide one underneath the bed. And I guess during a point of time through an ordeal, he didn't know where the knife was, so I didn't know if he felt that was a threat or not. So he still had a knife, you're on the floor. How long does he lay on top of you trying to hear your heart as you've described it? Maybe a minute, minute and a half. And then what, what did you do then? I knew something was about to happen, so I suggested that I go to the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom. At that time. What did he do? He kind of guided me to the bathroom. So when you say he guided, you still had a hold of your handcuff? Yes. And you went to the bathroom? Right. Did you urinate? Yeah. Were you able to u utilize your own zipper, or did he touch you at all? Touched me in no way. Didn't attempt to look, he just held me in back. Yeah. So, so in other words, he didn't try to look at what your penis looked like or not anything? Not at all. So after urinating, did you think that you were going to be the victim of, did he ask to, to, to engage in any homosexual acts with you? None whatsoever. Okay, so now you leave the bathroom and what happens? Okay, then we go back into the bedroom. Yeah. It was like different time spans. We were talking about him leaving his, losing his job. Then he would come to the person that I was first with, you know. And then at certain points he would change. You know, at first he was talking, telling me about how people didn't care for him and things of this nature. And I was trying to comfort him, letting him know that I was a friend, you know, that I wasn't going to try to run away from him or nothing like that. So you were being cool? I guess God, you can say that because I had no control. I was just, it was just, I don't know. Did this continue on for a long period of time during the night? Yes, apparently so. Time seemed to, I don't know. But I stayed in there that long, so it had to be going on throughout the whole ordeal, which it was. So time just, it happened like that. And all this time you're trying to hold him down. Yeah, some points, from, right. How um, often would he go in and out of these moods? Sorry, at the time spans, I couldn't really tell you. But like he would like, I guess if you want to put it together in time, every 30 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that, you know. And then he would have moods of being just silent. You know, and I wouldn't say anything, try to provoke him or say the wrong thing. I would be silent with him. So you just let him be alone. Did you, was, it, was that movie on the whole time, a long time? 
it was on a pretty good period of time, you know, and when it went off, I couldn't tell you. Did he continue to chant from time to time? Yes, it happened several times throughout the ordeal. Now, when he would watch the movie, did you notice when he would go into this thing that you told us where he would really become fixed on the movie screen? What was happening? How often would that happen? Throughout the movie, maybe every 15 or 20 minutes, and then he would turn around and try to ask me to put both of my hands behind my back, and I wouldn't, you know, do it. I would talk to him. I'd tell him, you can trust me. You know, you don't have to do this, and that would calm him down a little bit. You know? He had the knife the whole time. Right. He's watching the movie, and he becomes very interested in the movie. Right. You don't do anything. Just sit there. Just sit there and be quiet. And then he would start conversation with you again. Yeah, he would fight like, you're going to have to do this and that. You know, then he told me at a point I was going to have to kill him or he, either he was going to have to kill me at one point. Were you and he drinking during this time? No. So he wasn't running out, bringing you out and getting beers and no, coming back? No, I would have been out the window at that point. Sure. If he would have. Did he, when he was fixed, I'm trying to get some words to understand, was he intoxicated? I, 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 he had been drinking, but as far as being intoxicated, he was not staggering or anything of that nature. But you know that some people, when they have too much to drink, change their moods. Was that the kind of mood changes he was having or a different kind of mood no, change? I think this was like more of an inner mood change than an alcoholic mood change. What kind of mood change? It's like... Inner mood? Um, yeah, person change, not, not alcohol change. What did you think about this guy? What, what, were you, what was going through your mind as to who you were sitting next to who was doing all these things? A bizarre individual, someone that was very confused at this time. Now there came a time when you went to the washroom again? Right, I suggested, yeah, because he had started getting aggressive a little bit again. I suggested go to the bathroom. He let me stay in there by myself while he stayed outside the door at that time. And what happened then? And then I told him, well, I, I was contemplating, I was asking God, shall I make my move now? And I was going to just jump out the window. But when I got out, for some reason, I asked, could I have another beer? Yeah. And what did he do? And he, he reaches over, he guides me over and reaches in and get a beer. He still got you on the cuff. Yeah. And then he tells me, I told him uh, I want to sit in the front because it's an air conditioner. And I was just going to try to jump out the window or go for the door or whatever. And because the back bedroom didn't have an air conditioner, only in the front. So I suggested we sit on the couch. I had unbuttoned my shirt to try to make him feel more at ease. And then, and then I just sat on the couch like, and he just start going out of himself again. Yeah. Going out of himself? Yeah, he was like paying me no attention at that time. Like yeah. he wasn't there? Yeah, he started the chanting again and was like just sitting there, you know. And then I just, for some reason, I said, well, I need to go to the bathroom again. And he didn't follow me at that point. So I reached up, I got up, and then I got hit him and I ran out. So you hit him? Right. Did you have any other belongings there? Yeah, I had my bag right there at the end of the couch. And I sit in exactly the same place that I sit when I went in there. So when you got up, he let go of your cuff to let you go to the bathroom again? Uh, he didn't even, he just like, just let me stay there. I was going to go for the window. At that point, he didn't even have the cuff. It's like I wasn't even there anymore. And when you saw that, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. I just seized the opportunity. I said, well, at least I'm going to die trying. I'm not just going to sit here, you know. What'd you do, son? Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he like was right there, tried to grab me, get me back in there. And what happened? Then I made it outside. So he wasn't able to bring you back bring in? Bring me back in there, no. He tried? He tried. And as you left that apartment, as you got away from him, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you again, mm -hmm. what impressions were made on your mind by the conduct of Jeffrey Dahmer, by the actions of Jeffrey Dahmer, by the manner, expressions, and conversations of Jeffrey Dahmer that you observed? Can you give us some words? It's like I told the policeman that this freak, this crazy guy, was trying to hurt me. Yeah. Did you run out of the building? Yes, I did. Did you summon help? Yes. Milwaukee Police Department? That's correct. Did they come back there with you to the apartment? Right. Did you eventually go back into the apartment with the Milwaukee police officers? Yes. And then he was arrested? Right. You gave a statement to the Milwaukee police a few hours later? Yeah, I guess you could say a few hours, yeah. In 2011, almost 20 years to the day that Dahmer was arrested, Tracy was charged with homicide and then pled guilty to a reduced charge of aiding a felon. 
His former defence attorney says his life was negatively impacted as a result of Dharma's attack. He was never able to put the pieces back together in his life. Paul Kaczynski told Fox News. If you enjoyed this content, like and subscribe.